So let me remind you what we did, why we do what we do right now. What is the trick all about? First, we talk about what you did circle, right? And be able to identify angle and arc length. We talk about what's the difference between angle and arc length, right? Uh, we learn some formula, some of formula, half angle, double angle, all of that formulas. Uh, we learn how to simpl simplify trigonometric function. Verify mean you want to prove the left hand side equal to the right hand side, right? Do not solve. Now we are solving. Now we are solving for theta. Um, there are two parts, part one and part two. Part one is the easier one of the two, naturally. All right, uh, let's talk about the graphical approach. Since we human, we are very visualized. If I ask you um, the solution, can you tell me what is what is theta equal if I let theta, sign of theta equal one half? Right, so the first thing you do, what you look at a unit circle, right? Whereas angle that side theta is one half. Well, you look it up, see one half size, one half is positive. So you're gonna look at quadrant one and quadrant two, right? So one half, you see a little dash line there in black. Their size is one half. Right. It's apparently is angle what angle um is pi over six, right? One of them is pi, let me denote in blue, one of them is pi over six. And the other one, I'll do like this. I'll do like that. And the other one is five pi over six. Again, you always start out with the initial side, which is on the x-axis, right? Now, on the x, y, x, y graph, they, they do slightly different. The solution of psi theta equal one half is where the psi function intersect with the line y equal one half. Does that make sense? So we don't have, we, we rarely approach, in, we rarely see that, that first approach. Uh, usually, we're just going to look at the unit circle, okay? <clears throat> Cosine theta equals zero. More angle of theta, that when I plug in theta, cosine of it is equal to zero. Well, you look it up in unit circle, right? So what, what angle? Very good. I'm, I'm glad you go with the radian. Please keep with the radian. Um, the reason being because the restriction is zero to two pi, right? Um, if, if I say zero to 360 degree, then you can you can write in, in degree, but let's skip, stick to, to the radian. So either equal to two pi half or three pi half. I want you to do the rest. I'll give you a few minutes to do the rest.
Right, someone tell me what's theta for sine theta equal negative uh, one. Very good. That's only one, right? Two, five, two. Thank you. Someone else for C. No, let's do E first. Psi, psi theta is equal to zero. Um, theta will be what? And what else? What else? Zero, right? So zero and pi. <clears throat> Tangent theta equals zero. Um, tangent is psi over cosine, yeah? If you write it like this, if you write it like that, the only thing that be able to equal to zero is the top or the bottom? The top, right? The bottom doesn't matter what number it is, I don't care, but the top has to be zero in order for the whole thing to be zero. Oh, the bottom cannot be zero, apparently. Um, so this implies, right? Psi theta is equal to zero. And we already did in part E, right? Which is theta equals zero and pi. Which is makes sense, right? So if you look at here, the two right here, you don't have to write this down. So tangent is, theta is what? Psi over cosine, so zero over one, which is zero. Right. And then over here, tangent theta equal zero over negative one is still zero. Right. Let me ask you a question. What happened? Uh, it's not related to any problem that we're doing here. Uh, what is the tangent here? What tangent of, 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 of pi over two? Undefined, right? Because tangent pi over two is one over zero, which is undefined. By the way, in um in science, if you say something undefined because it's just fancy way of saying we don't know anything happened, it's not that point, right? It's like singularity. It's just fancy way of saying I have no idea what happened there. Uh, same thing with tangent at three pi over two, undefined, right? Psi co cosine d cosine equal two. It's not on unit circle. Hmm? Because mm, the, the unit circle is only zero to two pi, but why is it undefined? What happened when you take the cosine inverse? Your calculator say error, right? Yeah. So say cosine, take cosine inverse. I'm doing like this. So cosine theta, and then cosine inverse of two. How? What? What is the domain of cosine inverse? You gotta remember. Negative one to one, right? But two is not in there. Sin two is not belong to negative one to one. No solution. By the way, this notation means empty set is not zero. The zero is a solution. That means nothing inside. So a lot of people have habits in writing zero like that. <laughs> Maybe because that's how you see they type, but um, it's not true in mathematics. <clears throat> Uh, F is your you try one. Number three, find all the solution to the equation psi theta equal negative root three over two. Let's save us some time. Just determine what quadrant of psi theta equal negative root three over two. What quadrant would it be? Yeah, three n. Four, right? So it's save you time looking around, right? So all I have to focus on quadrant three and quadrant four, right? So at quadrant three, quadrant three, um, negative root three over two, I see that one. 
also that one. So apparently, what is that? What what angle is that? Let me put it in red. So the, the blue one is from here to here. Right? And then the red one is from here to here. Right. So theta equal either 4 pi over three or five pi over three. Number four. Find all the solution of equation tangent theta equals positive root three root three. But quadrant tangent is positive. One and three, right? One and three. Either they both both sine and cosine, either both positive or both negative. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because it saves you time looking around. Like you don't want to look all four quadrants, especially on the exam, you have limited time. So I only look at quadrant one and quadrant three. Root three over three is the same thing as one over root three. Can someone tell me what it is? Let me erase all that. Can someone tell me what, which one? Maybe just one first. The first one will be what? Root three over three. If, if, if you're not, maybe you want to change it into one over root three. Yeah, by mistake, right? By mistake. Yeah, thank you, same by mistake. Um, that's why sometimes I don't rest like this. It's easier for me to look that way. So one of them is pi over six. And the other one is seven pi over six, right? Everybody okay for this problem? Please ask if you have a question. Like I said, your final exam is heavily pulled from after exam three stuff. Now, a lot of you like calculator. You rely a lot on calculator. But um, for especially for trigonometry, calculator don't tell you everything. Right? Maybe it tell you half a story. The other half you have to come up with. Let's take a look at this example. If I ask you to find, if I ask you, you don't have to write this part down, just explanation wise. If I ask you to find side theta equal root two over two, then some people will just, just get to use your calculator right away. So they okay, maybe I'll, I'll do side inverse, side inverse, both sides. The root two over two is less than between negative one and one. So I, I'll be, and then you plug your calculator. Well, side on the left hand side, side inverse and side cancel, so it's just theta. When you plug when you plug side inverse with two over two in your calculator, tell me what you got. This is just calculator. No looking at the unit circle. What if I agree, right? Is that your final answer? Is that your is that everything? No, right? 
Yeah, there's another one the calculator don't tell you about, right? But you have to look it up on the unit circle. So at root two over two, let, let, you can take a look at here. Root, let me erase all that. Psi of root two over two, that's positive. So we look at quadrant one and quadrant two. Uh, that one and that one, right? So your calculator only tell you the first first one, but you have to come up with the other one. <clears throat> so you say, okay, um, maybe there's another one. Theta one, theta two equal one hundred and thirty five degree. That's the one you have to come up with. See those step right here? Uh, frankly, I never, I never remember these. I don't need to, and I'll tell you why I don't need to. Um, but let me explain it to you, okay? So, so you have it. Maybe you like it. I never do. When you let psi theta equal k and k is positive, in this case, root two over two is positive. That's your k, right? Then when you put up in your calculator, psi inverse of k. The theta is a calculator answer from quadrant one. It will be positive, right? which is what you have, 45 degree, right? The other one you have to, to come up with yourself. You, you take what? How do you come up with 135? You take 180 minus 45. 180 minus the one that your calculator gives you. Um, I don't like it. It, it, it. It's kind of lead you toward remem memorizing stuff and you will forget. Too many things to memorize. Um, if you understand it, you don't have to memorize it. So let me show you how I do this. And especially, well, what if the one I cannot find on the unit circle, right? Uh, then you you panic, right? Um, let me show you how I do this. If you're given psi theta equal a, it's some number, it doesn't matter, positive or negative. First of all, you have to determine um, if, 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 if psi theta is, if this value is going to tell you the quadrant of the So negative four over seven, uh, if you plug in your calculator, negative four over seven is roughly, let me say, negative four divided by seven is roughly, negative 0.57 something, right? So let's say negative 0.6. Let's say negative 0.6. Where's negative 0.6? Well, psi is the y-axis, right? So negative 0.6 is right here. So that's right there is negative 4 over 7. And then you draw a horizontal line from that point. So far, so good. From there, from the origin, from zero, zero, you're going to draw two lines that connect to the, the, the line you just draw. Like that. Now you have, now you have two angles, right? One of them, let me denote in blue. One of them is this one. And the other one I'll denote in red. If you plug in your calculator, your calculator will tell you the blue one, like the smaller of the two. Right. Let's do that. So I'm going to take psi inverse both sides. So psi inverse of psi theta. And, and why am I be able to take psi inverse? Can someone tell me? Yeah, negative four over seven is negative point six, right? It's between negative one and one. Like that. And then I can I can I can simplify the left. Right? And if you plug in the calculator, leave your calculator in, in degree mode. Can someone tell me what you got? Route it to one decimal place. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, 
let me let me put it over here. So I say calculator, and then it come up with theta equal negative thirty four point eight. Is that your final answer? No, right. By the way, it's not even the 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 answer that you want. Um, negative negative degree mean what? Negative angle mean what? You go what? Clockwise, right? But I want to go counterclockwise. So so what I have to do with the negative thirty four point eight? The one that you come up with in your calculator is actually this one. That one. Right. Now you can you can you can come up with the red one. Can someone tell me what the red one equal to? Theta equal. All you have to do take three sixty, right? Three sixty subtract thirty-four point eight degree, which is equal to three. Can someone tell me it was at 320 something? 24.2, right? 25.2, 25.2, oh, thank you. <clears throat> it's fine. All right, that's the red one. What about the blue one? Blue one. Can you can someone come up with a blue one? Yes. Hmm? Yes, your value on your calculator is negative, but look at what we want. We want what? We want positive, right? So we go counterclockwise. Because you do look at the problem, the original problem, psi theta equal negative four over seven. Negative four over seven is roughly negative 0.6. So what we do is we're gonna draw a little horizontal line here and then draw your two angle by how do I do that? Connect from the origin, connect the two line to the line that you just draw. So your first one, your first angle, always start at the initial side. Remember what the initial side is, right? The X axis. That one, your first one, the smaller of the two, and the second one will be what? The bigger one, right? So we want those angles. We want the blue and the red one. Now your calculator, what it does, it's gonna give you a negative, calculator always try the best way to simplify the answer, right? So it's gonna give you a negative angle, which is negative 34.8. It's not wrong. It's not wrong. The calculator is not wrong. But what you want is what? You want the positive angle. So all you have to do is what? Take 360, subtract that one. The calculator is not wrong. It just take the shortest way, but in terms of presentation, we want positive answer, right? So we have to subtract from 360. What are, that's the red one. What about the blue one? Yes. Yeah, very good, why? That one, that one equal, right? Yeah, they're symmetric. Imagine. Like I said, calculator can only help you so much. Uh, you have to come up the answer on your own. Can someone tell me what the equal to? 213.8. Point, point Thank you very much. Psi theta, psi squared theta equals 16 over 49. What's the first thing you do? 
Yeah, that's one or two point on the exam, right? Just, just show me the step. You got partial credit. So take the square root plus and minus um, side. So, so this is, this imply side theta equal plus minus four over seven, yeah? So that means we have how many cases? Two cases, right? Where we have side theta is equal to positive four over seven or side theta equal negative four over seven. Good thing for us, we already did this one. I suggest you go home do it again on your own without looking at my note. Repetition is the key. Let's take, take care of side theta equal four over seven. Four over seven is roughly 0.6. <clears throat> Let me draw my unit circle right here. So 0.6 is roughly here. And I'm going to draw my little, little dash, uh, pretend it's dash. Um, it's not perfect, sorry. Like that. And then from the or origin, you connect two lines to it. There you have your first angle, always start at the initial side, which is the x-axis. The first one in blue and the second one in red. <clears throat> Everybody okay with this part? How I do come, how, how, how I come up with this? Yeah, and you do the same on the exam if you have something like this. What do I do next? It's not a unit circle, so what I have to use? The calculator, right? So in order to use calculator, you take side inverse both sides. And because four over seven is between negative one and one, you're allowed to do that. So theta equal, <coughs> Can someone tell me what theta equal to? 34.8 again, right? Yeah, thank you. Good, do I have to change anything at all? Do I have to change anything? Is it matched with the, your picture? Yes, right, so you're okay, right? The only thing you have to change is when you have a negative values because you have a negative sign. Um, what about the red one? <clears throat> yeah, one one eighty minus thirty four point eight. One eighty minus thirty four point eight. Point forty five point two. For the positive one, it's slightly easier. So you have four solution, four solution. <clears throat> Any question before I move on, please ask. You have, you have to get this lecture in order to move on to the next part two, which is Friday, last one.
<coughs> for part D, what would what would you suggest I should do? Very good, right? The first thing you do, put it inside. Right, so one over side theta equal four over seven. I don't want my side theta to be in the denominator. So if I would flip it, what happened? Yeah, reciprocal, right? So, so if you take reciprocal like this, reciprocal, I don't know, you, you, familiar, right? you familiar with that notation? By the way, it's not inverse, okay? I, I know they look the same, but in this context, it's the, it's the reciprocal. Um, just remember, if you're not familiar with it, if you flip something, the other side has to flip as well. So side over theta, over one, I'm not gonna write over one, but it's gonna equal to seven over four. You don't have to write this part down, but if you like, you can look. Um, if you're not, you don't like that method, you can do this. You can, you can do like you did in high school, crisscross multiply, right? Because because you have one fraction on the left, one fraction on the right. Uh, you say four side theta equal one times seven is seven. Side theta equals seven over four. Is that okay? The same thing, right? Um, whichever you feel comfortable with. No solution, right? Four size seven over four big, bigger than one. Um, since seven over four is not between negative one and one, and because of that, you can't take inverse. No solution. So that's solving trigonometry function. This is simple, right? There will be a um, more elaborate problem. So that's sine. We talk about just sine. The one we just did here in objective 3a is all about sine, right? Uh, let's take a look at cosine. And I'm gonna do the same, right? I'm gonna do the same. Cosine of theta equal negative two over five. When when you when we talk about cosine, what what axes you want to look at? The x, right? So negative two over five look like gonna be on the left, right? The left part. Um, negative point four, yeah. Let me do it like this. You don't have to do this part. So this one is equal to negative point four. Where's negative point four? slightly to the left of negative point five. So here, right. right and you do the same thing, you draw a little dash fly from that point. And from the origin, you connect the two line to it. The first angle always start at the initial side, right? to the first line and then the second one initial side to the second line so you know your angle one of them is in quadrant two the other one in quadrant three if you plug that in your calculator what do you get say so i'm taking both side inverse of both sides They give you a negative angle. Calculator. Can someone tell me what you got? Huh? Say again, I can't hear. Oh, 113.5. Okay, it doesn't give you negative. That's good. 130. 
Thirteen point five, you say? Um, point five or point six? Okay. I mean, that's minor, minor stuff. Good. So, uh, is the angle is in quadrant two? Yeah. So we okay, right? We don't have to change anything. It's matched with our picture. All you have to do is find out the red one. What do you think red one gonna equal to? Just look at the picture. You think what what do you how do you come up with the red one? Hmm? What minus what? 360, right? 360 minus, <clears throat> minus 113.6, right? Why? Because, because this one is equal to that one. Due to symmetric. <clears throat> so it's roughly 246.4. Four degree, and it's indeed in third quadrant. It's matched with your picture. Number seven. That's your you try two. Maybe I'll have a little note here. So I know that it's gonna be quadrant second and third. So I, I know I know my answers should be in that quadrant. <clears throat> my advice to you when you do this problem, draw the picture. Right? I, I know you can use a calculator, but calculators can be very deceitful, right? You have to understand what quadrant you're looking at. As long as your, your answer matches with your picture, you're okay. okay. All right, so that's cosine and sine. Uh, let's talk about tangent theta. Before I, let me ask you a question. What is the domain of tangent inverse? Does anyone remember? All real, right? It's the easiest function. Tangent inverse is to take anything, right? Uh, so I don't care if it's five or four or less than one or bigger than one, it'll take it, right? So it's all we have solution. Um, tangent theta equal five over four. Is it quadrant, what quadrant am I looking at? Yeah, my answer are in what quadrants? One and three, right? Quadrant one and quadrant three. It's a good thing to establish your, your quadrant right? so that you know that you get the right answer or not. <clears throat> take, the, take the tangent. In, in this case, it's difficult for us to draw a picture, but let's take tangent inverse. Tangent of theta. And to the right hand side, tangent inverse of five over four. <clears throat> what do your calculator give you? 51.3. Okay, thank you. So theta equal 51.3 degree, R roughly, not, not equal, approximately. Is it in quadrant one? Yes, right. So we don't have to change anything, right? Oopsie. <clears throat> we call it theta one. Um, let me just I just highlight it with blue. What about the other one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one eighty, right? Because you want in quadrant three, right? So theta equal. 
So for these kind of problems, the first thing you do is determine what quadrant your answer will be in. It helps you a lot. I suggest you do number nine at home, please do. Without looking at the answer, right? Change your mode into um into de degree. It's it's easier for you to manage. Because if I tell you negative point eight, you don't know how big is negative point eight in radian, right? But you know how big is negative like thirty degree in degree, right? <clears throat> All right, let's solve more elaborate problem. Those are a little prepping up for the big one. Um, if you look at ten B. If you look at 10B, what does it remind you of? You don't have to tell me the answer. Just tell me what does it remind you of, that's all. Quadratic, right? Quadratic. So if, it, I, if I was you, I would do this. It's difficult for me to factor like that, right? What I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around it. So I'm going to let you equal the middle term, the middle the middle middle variable cosine theta. I'm gonna let my u to be equal to the little middle one. Then if I rewrite this equation in terms of u, what happened? Then two what cosine square theta is gonna be two u square, right? Plus cosine theta, which is we let it equal to u minus one equals zero. And you guys know how to factor that. And you don't use quadratic formula. It's not like you stuck definitely. So two u and u, right? Because two u times u has to be two u squared. And then the negative one is all you, nothing you can do, one and one, right? Um, which one is minus, which one is plus? Don't write this down if it like that. You can check. You can always check. Outer and inner. So one u, negative two u. Mm, you don't want you want you want the opposite, right? You can check. Nobody got the right answer the first time. Um check. Now I got it right. Do you guys know how to solve this? So this implies 2u minus 1 equal to 0, or u plus 1 equal 0. Add 1 divided by 2, u, u equal 1 half. Subtract 1, u equal negative 1. It looks like we do the algebra for the most part. Um, am I solving for you or cosine theta? Cosine theta, so we have to plug it back, right? Now, put back cosine theta is u equal one half. Or cosine theta equal negative one. Everybody okay? I just plug it back to you, I replace you back. We did this. What's called side theta equal one half? What angle? You can find it on the unit circle. Uh, by the way, um, let me do this. Let me um, insert from file. I never shared this to you. Um. I should, I should, I'll share on the email on Tuesday night. 
your formula on the final exam, the one that you are given. So here is the formula you are given on formula sheet for final exam. See, so you have a lot of things going on. One half, say one half. Um, it's going to be quadrant one and quadrant two, right? So that one. Oh, sorry, quadrant one and quadrant four. And this one. So theta equal pi over three and theta equal five pi over three. What what the uh, what angle what angle give me cosine theta equal negative one? Hi, right, thank you very much. <clears throat> and remember, we only care about the period is between zero and two pi. What happened if it's zero to four pi? What happened zero to six pi, right? We'll talk about that next time. If you have something like this on the final, can you do it? Okay. If you see something like algebra, make it into like algebra. And at the end, you put it back. That's your trick. Um, part C. <clears throat> now, the first thing I, I, I don't want you guys to do is you divide both side by, by side theta. But, oh, I'm simplifying. It's, and, and it's natural that you do that. I don't write this down. So I see people. I'll do this. Uh, yay, that's gone, that's gone. Cancel, right? And it's easy. Um, you don't want to do that. Why? Because you lose a solution. You do, by, by doing that, you lose a solution. Let me give you, write this down. Let me give you an example. Well, I have 3x equal x squared. You don't want to do this. You don't want to divide both side by x because because this is what kind of equation I give you? Quadratic. I mean, how many solutions you should have? Two, right? You, if, if you divide both side by x, you're going to have one solution. That means you lose one, right? Um, you can do this, though. You can do this. You can divide both side by three. It's fine, right? Three and six are known, right? Uh, you're not lose anything, but do not divide the the variable. Right? It's unknown. You're supposed to find it, not not make it disappear. So if I can't divide, what can I do? Subtract, right? Subtract. I'm going to subtract um negative side theta, negative side theta, both sides. You can do the other way around. But I like this way. So that's cancel. On the left hand side, that's just zero equal two side theta co side theta minus side theta. <clears throat> now, what can I do next? Yeah, you factor out the sign, right? So if I factor out the sign, I have two, two co side left minus one. And then what do I do next? Just like algebra, what do I do next? You set each of the factor equals zero, right? So if, if, if the two number multiply to zero, at least one of them is zero. So that's imply, this imply either side theta equals zero or two co side theta minus one equals zero. Uh, what angle cos uh, side theta equals zero? Zero and negative zero and pi, right? Zero. 
no put zero negative one. It's uh, just, I know on the exam you panic and just, sometimes you look at things not very clear. Um, the second one, um, cosine theta equal at one divided by two. So cosine theta equal one half. And we already did that above there, right? The angle that cosine is one half is pi over three and pi pi over three. For D, what do you think I should do? Let's you subtract again, right? Do not divide both sides by tangent theta. I know it's tempted, but don't do that. Um, so subtract both sides by three tangent theta. Is that okay? So um, tangent theta, side square theta minus three tangent theta equals zero. Maybe I'll do one more step when you go home. Say, what happened? Um, minus three tangent theta minus three tangent theta. Cancel. And then now we can factor tangent theta. And then what's left is a psi squared theta minus three equals zero. This implied either tangent theta equal zero or psi squared theta minus three equals zero. <clears throat> what angle that tangent is zero? Huh? Yeah, zero and pi. Um yeah, I think we did the last in the first page. What about side square theta minus three? Well, you do what you usually do, right? Add three. So side square theta equal three. And then square root both sides. Don't forget plus and minus. So side theta equal root three or side theta equal minus root three. Is there a solution? No, because, yeah, root three is not inside negative one and one, right? Uh, root three, if you look, look in your calculator, is roughly 1.7, or negative root three is negative 1.7, and you say it's not between negative one and one, So no solution. So the only solution you have is zero and pi. <clears throat> All right, part B, uh, I'm gonna walk you through for the first one and then the second one is your you try three. <clears throat> What this problem remind you of? Quadratic again, right? So if, if you are good, it just factor right away like that, good for you. But for most of us, I'm gonna say let u equal tangent x. So then if I rewrite that equation, it's gonna be u squared plus phi u minus one equals zero. Um, it's not factorable. There's no, there's no number, multiply is negative one and add to five. Okay. So you have to use quadratic formula. Let me write it for you, just, just remind. U equal negative B plus minus B squared minus four AC over two A.
B is 5 plus minus B squared, which is 5 squared, minus 4 times A is 1, C is negative 1, over 2 times 1. <clears throat> Right, 5 squared 25, negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. 25 plus 4 is 29. So plus minus so square root of 29 over 2. <clears throat> so this implies what? Either u equal negative 5 plus root 29 over 2, or u equal negative 5 minus root 29 over 2, right? And because tangent invert, it'll take everything, so there's no case, no solution here. Okay. <clears throat> now, we don't want u, we want tangent, right? So that's just scrap work. I wouldn't say scrap work, more like side work. Um, so let's talk about the, the first case, which is tangent x u equal negative five, so tangent x equal negative five plus root, did I do, yeah, plus root 29 over two. Or tangent x equal negative five minus root 29 over two. I'm going to do the first one. The second one says you, you try. Let's do the first one. What do you think? How do I approach this? Well, not that you cannot look it up on unit circle, can you? The next step will be tension inverse, right? Tension inverse. Tangent inverse, tangent inverse. Remember the domain of tangent inverse is everything. So it doesn't matter, negative or positive. Um, so x equal, or roughly, if you plug in the calculator, make, make sure practice doing so. Right. Let me tell you the happy ending. It's gonna be 10.90 degree. Oh, by the way, um. No, don't look at the tangent inverse yet. Look at the original, the, the, the one in black. Tangent x equal negative 5 plus the square root of 29 over 2. Is this one positive or negative? Well, you can, you can, you, you don't, you can plug in the calculator, but say the uh, square root of 25 is smaller than square root of 29, right? So it's gonna be positive, right? Um, so, so if the tangent positive, what quadrant? What quadrant? Pa one and three, right? One and three. See, you know the quadrant. It's, help it's helpful. Uh, it does it look like quadrant one? Yeah, right, so we stop. We're not changing anything. Right, we've got the right answer. And then, um, how do I got quadrant three? It has to be bigger than 180. So what do you do? You add, right? You add, you take 180 plus 10.90. Cause you know it's gonna be in quadrant three, right? That's the only way you can find it. 190.9. Ninety degree. Yo, yo, you try. Um, it's gonna be negative, right? So tangent negative in quadrant two and four, right? So your answer should be somewhere between ninety to one hundred eighty or two seventy to two sixty. Hey, uh, that's it, Zoomer. Uh, if you don't have any questions, have a good one, and I'll see you again on Friday.